Hello, hello, gorgeous humans. We're back day two of our live stream extravaganza. So I like to call it live stream extravaganza. Um, such a joy to connect with you all yesterday. Thank you for joining me. What a blessing. And um, today we're going to be doing more of the same. I'm here to answer any of your questions that you have about business, marketing, creativity, e-courses, productivity, uh, being neurodivergent and creating success anyway. Um, what other things do I love to talk about? I love to talk about money and philanthropy and creating books and all the fucking things, guys, all of them. As always, I want to begin by acknowledging that I live and work on the lands of the Gubby Gubby people, the traditional and ongoing custodians of the lands and seas where I am, and I want to pay my respects to their elders past, present, and future, because you're spread out all across the, the globe. I want to do the same for the traditional custodians and the elders of the lands and seas where you are as well. And if you don't know the traditional custodians, if you go to native-land.ca, it's a beautiful world map that's being populated there of the traditional custodians. Um, if you want to pop the traditional custodian name, just the traditional custodians' names in your uh, in the comments, uh, that would be really beautiful. It's a really important racial justice practice to do, and it's also here in Australia, the First Nations people say that um, it makes the spirits of the lands happy to hear it as well. Hi, Kayleen. It is beautiful to have you here. Now, for those who haven't been on my kind of live streams before, the way you ask questions is if you type in question and capital letters first and then um, write your question in after that. And um, that way I can really quickly scroll through and um, find the, the questions that to answer. Um what else do I need to say? Oh, that's right. Uh, if you haven't checked out already, um, I currently have my academy open for new members. If you go to leonidawson.com forward slash academy, um, that is the place where you can find all of my business and marketing courses and books and workshops and resources and guest expert workshops. It's over $5,000 in value and you get it for under $100 a year. It's kind of the the place that I like to make miracles happen, really. There's not really anything on the market like it. I just love to be super generous and um, make something extraordinary for you all. I think tomorrow as well, I am going to do a free live workshop as well on how to deal with trolls and online criticism when you're running a business. Uh, if you're not already, make sure that um, you join my mailing list so I can send notifications of that as well. Um, and then I will give the recording of that workshop to all my academy members and then um, it won't be available online after it's live. So that's what I'm dreaming of at the moment. So tell me about you. What would you like to hear me share about or riff about um, or if you just like me to share what I'm thinking of, all that kind of stuff. Um, that would be Bonza. Um, Kayleen says, do you know the link to find our land custodians? Yes, sure. Let me type it in and then I can bring it up as a banner as well here in StreamYard. That would be super helpful, especially because I do mention it quite a bit and um, it would be great if I can just show it to people. There we go. Native-land.ca. Um, beautiful world map. And um, and there are some parts of the land of the world where, um, you know, there was overlapping territories as well, which is just hugely fascinating. So um, let me check my comments. Appreciate the only wisdoms. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. For me, I've been going through this kind of funny journey this year in that I really knew that I wanted to 
step into expansion mode again and um, really move into sharing with more and more people. You know, I feel really lucky that I've had a business um, that is brought in on average a million dollars a year plus um, for the last, since 2014, which is amazing. And I've been selling online for 20 odd years. And um, I feel really blessed that it's been divine and steady and gorgeous. And I love that, you know, my people are very, um, I wouldn't say loyal is the right word. I think my people tend to hang out in my business for a really long period of time because um, they get a lot of value out of it. They know that I'm going to be over generous. They know that I am going to um, give practical advice. Um, I'm going to reduce complicated subjects down and make it fun and doable. Um, so I feel really grateful that I've been able to have a seven figure business for a really long time, even when I haven't necessarily been doing a huge amount of stuff to expand my market. Um, so this year I've been stepping into more of that expansion energy again. I'm like, okay, well, how do I want to share even more bigger and brighter with the world? And um, it's been interesting to see what's come up for me internally as well, because um, I've definitely come up against some of my own mindset blocks again as I've done it. And it's really interesting because I've been doing this for a really long time. And obviously, I've gotten through a lot of visibility blocks before. Um, but it's like a muscle. If you don't use it, uh, then you get um, those muscles become flaccid. Your mindset can sometimes downgrade a little bit. And so I'm definitely noticing um, where my mindset need, needs work again. So I went through a, a phase where I was kind of feeling quite low self-confidence and low self-esteem, which is uncommon for me, um, around feeling like I didn't know what I was doing in my business, even though I've been doing it for so long. It was so fascinating that it came up. Um, and then because I was having that kind of low self-esteem, um, I was wasn't trusting my own wisdom and my own insights and the way that I like to do business. And so I would choose these things and be like, right, that's the thing that's going to save me. And if I just work hard enough and do that thing perfectly, then I'll sort my shit out. Then I'll work it out. And I did it with a few things. Like I got the full focus planner Um. And I was like, this is it. This is the system. And if I just do this perfectly, I'll finally nail everything. Meanwhile, I already have nail stuff. Like, it's fine, guys. But this is the, the mindset I was going in with. Then I was like, got obsessed with a 12-week year, which is like this planning method, which is so funny because I'm not usually a planner. Um, and... I was like, I need to do the perfect plan for a 12-week year. And then I also started using a productivity app um, called Motion, which you put in all your priorities and it maps out like your priorities for you. And you're like, wow, I am so smart. Look at my calendar. It's got all the tasks in it. But it all of these things, they kept fucking me up. Like I would get my head stuck up my own asshole because like it was just setting up this real perfectionism in me and this lack of trust in my own energy and my own energy levels. And, um, you know, this, I like to do business my own way completely. And, um, when I don't, things feel really off. I even did it with like product launch formula. I decided like, you know, I've owned product launch formula for like a decade now and I still haven't done the fucking thing. But this, like this year, I was like, this is it. I am going to nail this one thing and it would make all the difference. But it just like coming in from that mindset of like, I am flawed. This is the thing that will fix me. But surprisingly, did not help whatsoever. And so I've had to just like step back from using anybody else's systems and just experiment and play and see what works for me and trust that whatever comes out of this 
will be the right and the good thing. And it feels like such a better energy to come from than where I was at. So I think from a lot of parts of this year so far, I've been insufferable within myself. <laughs> and my osteopath Sophie was like, so let me guess right, you had your dream job that you absolutely adored and um, really fucked around with, like you just had the best time with, and now you've given yourself a job that you really hate because you're so hard on yourself. And I'm like, mm-hmm, that's correct. That's correct. So I'm going back to dream life mode, guys. I really am. Um, and I still want to be in the energy of expansion, but I want to do it in a way that feels good to me and to my soul and that still honors me. Okay. Fair Maiden Market says, question, I'm in your academy. I died laughing at your dog humping story. I had a rider dog that did the same thing and I literally laughed out loud. <laughs> I really want to create an artsy ebook yearly planner for my dot art business. I just don't know um, who to go to for organizing that or where I can find creative information other than st- stealing ideas off Canva. Can you help me? Um, Kisses, Leanne. Can you tell me more about wh- who to go for for organizing that? Do you mean like if you are looking at like you need somebody to illustrate it for you or – um, you need an editor or you need to print it, tell me more. Also, the 40 days to finish your book will help you hugely because um, it gives a whole bunch of details on that. Um, also, for everyone who's like, I'm sorry, what, the dog humping story? It's a story. <laughs> um, one of, like, my big breaks, <laughs> big breaks, there's so many, but... Um, was I had a dog called Charlie and he was just the best dog ever, can terrier and just an enormous personality. Um, but he fucked everything inside. He really did. And um, I used to like hang out on this message board. This is pre-social media days because this, this is how long I've been on the internet for. Um, I used to hang out on this message board and – um, it was run by the author Sark, who I love and adore and has been hugely, hugely um, not just influential, but just such a, a deep inspiration and a deep soul guide for me um, at, from a really young age. So it was her message board. I think I've even got oh, some of the books here. Go. Just behind me. There you go, Succulent Wild Wild Woman by Sark. Um, and the thing I love about it is that it's all hand-drawn and there's pages that are, you know, colour and she includes her art in it. And, you know, of course I loved it. Of course I loved it. Anyway, she came onto the message board one day and she said, um, what can you see outside your window? And I looked out the window and... You could see like these beautiful, you know, the Alpine mountains of Canberra um, from from where we were living. And I was going to write something really beautiful and really poetic. Um, and when I looked out the window, though, I looked out and my dog Charlie was just out in the backyard and he'd found a purple blanket and he was just fucking it and then staring up at the window at me while he fucked. And I thought, I could make this poetic or I could say it as it really is. And so I said it as it really is. <laughs> and um, it really uh, caught Sark's attention and she went on to kind of really uh, encourage me. She adored Charlie. She kind of regarded him as like and one of her, her soul animals and um, she even put me and Charlie in some of her books um, down the track. And it was just such a, a massive, massive gift and like a real like, oh, you're on the right path. Keep going. Um, so that's the dog hunting story and how it helped begin my career. <laughs> you never know where it's going to, um, where it's going to take you. 
Leanne says, a wiener dog, not right a dog. Well, a wiener dog doing humping would be even better in my books. Elizabeth says, I'm in the academy. I'm overwhelmed how many awesome things there are to do. What's the best course for me to start on? Do you have a plan of which courses to do in which order? So I always recommend that you start with Sales Star. Sales Star is like the, the linchpin of um, the linchpin but also just such an essential building block for business. And when you've got sales star, then everything else you do, whether it's creating and selling e-courses or writing books or um, selling products online or selling products in person, sales star really helps amplify that to the next level. Um, also, like I always recommend people like have a look through what is it that you are needing right now in your business. If you need to set up your website, use that website. If you need to get your mailing list sorted, use, use that course. Um, if you need to set your goals, use the goal workbooks in there. If you need to get your money under control, use the money course. So it's really like it's a menu of options. There's no one right way or run wrong way to do it. It's really about, okay, what is it that my business needs right this second? Um, and if you're not sure, start with Sales Star. Hello, Adele from the UK. Vegan says, I have thoroughly enjoyed the Academy. Oh, my goodness. I am so thrilled to hear it, and I'd love to know what's your favourite part of it. Agatha says, oh, my God, yes, I get stuck in the structure for fear of trusting myself. Exactly, exactly. Kayleen says, I'm good at planning. It's the implementation and follow through to completion that I really struggle with. I think that is true for the vast majority of people. So don't feel like you're super special in that. Um, what is important is um, what, what can be really useful for that is a few different techniques. First and foremost, the wild donkey, donkey technique that I teach about where um, if an idea turns up um, in your paddock, your job is to ride that wild donkey until it's complete and put it out in the world and do it in the fastest period of time possible. So for me, when it comes to writing a book, if you said to me, write a book in a year, Leone, it's never going to get done. But if you say, Leone, write a book in a month, I will have it done. So short, sharp deadlines can be really, really useful. That's why in the Academy, there's 40 days to create and sell your e-course, 40 days to finish your book. Helps you do both those things in a month and a little bit more. Um, most people finished before then, which is amazing. Um, but having that intensity of getting something complete is very, very useful. Another thing that can be really helpful is having accountability. So using people in the accountability Facebook group or the non-social media forum to um, connect with other people who have goals and getting those done. A lot of people use my um, group coaching calls in the academy, and the business basics workshops as um, basically like co-working time. So they turn up, they kind of put me on mute and they just get shit done. Um, while, um, you know, other people are doing stuff as well. There's a real energy to it. It's called body doubling and it works even um, online. And, of course, that's why co-working spaces can be really useful as well if that's up your alley. Um, yeah, I also really love Gretchen Rubin's The Four Tendencies book because that can really help you clarify where your um, – where you get motivated and what would help that process in order to help you get to completion as well. Fair Maiden Market says, where to get ideas? You know, with ideas, or do you mean ideas on how to put the book together? You absolutely can, like, look around, see what other people are doing, see what inspires you. I always love to get a really big piece of paper out and just start brain dumping things down or a Google document and I just brain dump. That's how I create everything. It's just brain dumping. And um, here's, my, here's my hot tip as well. Um, if you find it hard to brainstorm 
and like get ideas to create something. Um, you need to make a change in your surroundings or um, in your body in order to get into the mood for that. So instead of just sitting at your computer that you sit at every single day to do this, um, I recommend either getting analog, like writing it down on a piece of paper. You can also go have a bath in order to brainstorm and being in a different environment will help you shift into a different energy. I have a, um, a foot massager. <laughs> Here, Russell, I can show you. There you go. I have a foot massager and when I want to brainstorm or when I want to study something but I feel like I don't have quite enough stimulation, I come and sit in this chair. I put my feet in the foot massager while I do the brainstorming. It works a treat. I just did that before I came online um, and wrote out like the brainstorming for a whole new workshop that I think I'm going to run tomorrow. Um, and lastly, leaving your house and going to a cafe, to a park, being out in nature can be very, very useful as well. Once you start that process, the ideas will start coming to you at nighttime or in the shower um, and you can add it to that collection as well. Megan says, I'm in the Academy. I joined last year. When does my access yet end? Is it yearly? Yes. Academy access is every 12 months. It's always been like that. Um, I started running it in 2010, ran it for nine years. Then um, it went into hibernation mode after everyone's, um, I, I kind of canceled everyone's accounts at that time. Um, and then I gave them 18 months free from there up to 18 months free and they got you know free workshops all that kind of stuff um without having to pay for it and then it was retired and archived and then i reopened in october last year so um you can have a look through your receipts to see when you signed up uh, you should get reminders as well before your academy renewal um, is up and whether you want to cancel it or not. And you can also email in support at leonidawson.com and we will absolutely help you out. Agatha says, I'm on Wix. I'm looking at going to the essential. Mailing list is good enough there, correct? Do, no need to get into mail, mail life. No, just do whatever is doable for right now. And that is perfect. I'm so proud of you. You're on the thing. You're on the thing, babes. Amanda says, I have a herd of wild donkeys. Okay, if you have more ideas than you know what to do with and you're not sure what to start, I am going to take you through a process right now um, that's going to help you identify the one that you need to do first. Okay, so this is for anyone if you've got a whole bunch of book ideas or course ideas or business ideas or whatever. So I want you to piece a paper out. And I'm going to give you like 30 seconds and you just start writing out the things that are on your list. Just brain dump it all. It doesn't need to live up here anymore. Just brain dump it out into the piece of paper. I'm going to give you some music while you do that. All right. Great. You can finish off this list anytime you like, but all you need to do is just circle the one that's at the top of your list because the one that's at the top of your list is the one that you have been thinking about for the longest period of time or the one that feels most intense to you right now, the most important one. And you are going to do that idea and you are going to run with it and ride that wild donkey until it's complete. And then you're going to put it out into the world. You're going to market it and make sure that it gets the people who needs it. And then you can choose the next idea. Huh? Huh? It works in 100% of situations. And if you say to me, no, 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 Leonie, you are wrong. There is another one on this list that is more important. Well, ta-da, I've just solved that problem for you. Circle that one, do that one instead. But 99.9% of the time, it's the one that's the top of the list. Megan says, I have enjoyed Star Sales Star. I love the planners. I've made so much progress in my personal life and I'm smashing my goals. 
daily, babes. That makes me so happy to hear. I love that. I love that. I love that. Hope says, I just joined the Academy. Is there a link to get all the meetings scheduled in your calendar? Yes. If you go to the hub, which is the first one in there, click on the Academy calendar in there and it will give you the link. Um, if you are having any issues, email support at leonidawson.com. We are here to help you out. Fair Maiden says, I've got so much done while listening to your courses. I put you on pause and implement whatever you said. So far, I've created 12 online classes, a website, 24 downloadable PDFs, and an email list. Now to do the ebook planner. Babes, I am so proud of you. You are incredible. I love you. This is amazing. Can I please? like showcase you to the world because this is the shit I love to see when people use the academy and it just turbocharges their creative efforts and the business efforts. Um, she says, can you check out my website, fairmaidenmarket.com? Um, yes, I can. And if anyone else wants to play along, you can have a look at it as well, fairmaidenmarket.com. I won't do too long of a review on it um, just because I want to, I, uh, I can't share the screen. So when we're on the academy coaching calls, usually when I look at sales pages, I can, um, or websites, I can share my screen so everyone can see. Um, but I can today. Okay. First and foremost, uh, it is a very, like one, great. You've got a website. I'm so proud of you. Two, um, I would love to see um, straight up all of your different offerings with a an image for each of them. Be like, okay, I've got a class for this, 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 this. I've got all of these offerings. I want an about section about you. Testimonials. Uh Okay, except they're very difficult to read when they're just small images like that. I would prefer to see um, those bigger. Um, and um, a lead magnet for your newsletter would be awesome. But I am so, so proud of you um, for having all of those things done. And I'd love to be able to like, when I look at your website, I would love to just be able to see at a, at a scroll who you are, what you offer and how I can buy your shit, basically. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ali's here again. Hello, beautiful Ali. It is so lovely to hear you today. Um, Fair Maiden says, what's a lead magnet? How can I get that? We are running a Business Basics workshop um, in the academy. I think it's next month. Next month. Um, let me just quickly check our schedule um, for when the new business basics workshops are coming out. Um, so I will teach you how to do all the things there. I'll teach you how to do the lead magnet. Basically, it's uh, a free thing that you give away in order to get people onto your mailing list. So sometimes that's PDFs, downloadables, um, you know, really pumping up and talking about the benefits of your newsletter, all that kind of stuff. So the lead magnet section is coming in August. So July, we're talking about mastering your tech stack for business. And then August, we're doing the lead magnet. September, we do create a newsletter. And tomorrow, we have Castella. Uh, teaching in the academy about how to create income streams for artists as well. She is enormously successful, um, a multi six figure creative, very, very inspiring, and just the most beautiful human. She's a personal friend um, who lives here on the Sunshine Coast. And um, I love going to our major shopping center here because um, it is decorated like head to toe in Cass Della murals and stuff like that. And it's actually really funny because, you know, I, I know Cass and I know her art, all that kind of stuff. And then I was hanging around in the Sunshine Plaza and I was like, why does that mural look so much like Cass's art? 
And I texted her and she's like, oh yeah, that was me. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So Cass is incredible. And this month as well in the Academy, I've hired Louise O'Reilly um, to teach inclusion as a business asset as well. Louise is an incredible beautiful human uh, she is a first nations woman who teaches so powerfully and with so much love about how to advocate and support um, marginalized members of our community and how we can make our businesses um, that much safer and more loving for everybody um, so I've been taking her courses for years and got to meet her uh, last month and <laughs> I just totally fangirled all over her um, and because I have zero chill zero chill guys uh, so that will be so cool and then next month we've got um, a, we've got well, well we've got a bunch of guest experts for the rest of you we've got Tina Tower, Piggy Makes Bank, Lizzie Goddard, um, we have Lou Nista, Michelle Roa, so many incredible women teaching about so many different things. And we have a new business basics workshop happening every single month that I run. I give you a new business template or done for you resource like launch results trackers, financial goals trackers, content planners, all that kind of stuff. Every month we have a live round of an existing course in the academy that's already happening. Um, so if people are just starting now, you can sign up to get daily or weekly emails about um, those courses as well. And that'll help you also move through it with other people who are doing it. Dudes, I just try and create as much amazing value in the academy as possible so that people can do all the things. Oh, my God. We've got the, the Louise O'Reilly here. She said, oh, I feel so loved. Oh, you said I was fangirling over you too. <laughs> I can't wait to next year's conference. Um, Ali says Louise is a rock star big time, big time. And she taught at the Heart Center Business Conference about inclusion and it was just absolutely chock full of value and I feel like I'm still digesting um, all of it. It's after midnight where I am. So trippy to see the sunshine. And my love, not just trippy, but it's tomorrow's sunshine because it's <gasps> Tuesday afternoon. What a, what a planet we live in. What a planet. K111 says, how do I position myself as an expert in my e-course? I'm enthusiastic about the subject matter, but I've not written books. I'm not a coach. Don't have a podcast. I'm not quoted anywhere. I'm 10% ahead totally fine you just share about your journey you just share about what's true for you right now um, what you've learned how you can help people you do not need to be the expert as I teach in 40 days to create and sell your e-course um, it can just be like why like you know your experience how this information has helped you changed you and um, how you can help people learn that little bit more that they don't know yet Carol says, do you enjoy music to help you manage your day, whether in funk, shift emotions, or just to laugh at life? If so, what kind of music? I love having one to three song dance parties throughout my day and love adding new music to my playlist. Oh, I love that. That is so gorgeous. Um, I tend to do more chill music. For me, it's a very comforting thing. So my comfort listens are the ones that I've been listening to 25 years now. Um, so I most often listen to James Taylor um, and meeting him and getting to be front seat at his concert was by far the best night of my life, bar none. Um, and I like it's like I have the taste of somebody who's like 30 years older than me. And when I wear a James Taylor Van t-shirt, it's everybody like in their 60s and above going, oh, yeah, James Taylor. And I'm like, that's the spirit. Yeah, you and me, babes. Everyone else is like, who? Um, I love Fleetwood Mac and Paul Simon, but not as much as I love James Taylor. Um, the album I listened to Second of all, when I create, is Olivia Newton-John's Grace and Gratitude album. Um, I have been listening to that as I create for like 15 years. I don't know, ever since it came out, really. And um, it's just the thing that I use to 
get in the zone. Um, we also, I think on Spotify, there's Leonie's Get Shit Done playlist from when I was running the Get Shit Done Club. If you get it, to play that and you'll be able to hear that. Um, the ones that pump me up are Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> I'll play that when I'm celebrating something and I want to dance around to the house. Um, I Was Here by Beyonce. I could cry every single time. And Unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield because, yes, I am a child of the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Pricey says, I'm so excited I'm getting Louise to do my business acknowledgement of country. <gasps> that is so beautiful and so good. Uh, what in the hillbilly librarian shit are you babbling about? I don't know. And, like, would you like to clarify more? Because you do, like, I can't tell if this is a funny joke or if you're being an asshole. So please let me know if you could just out yourself whether you're just being funny um, or if you're being an asshole. Like either way, because um, if you're being funny, cool, we can laugh about it. If you're being an asshole, I will just ban and block you. Nice. Um, Fawn says, so glad to see you back, Leonie. Hello from New Zealand. Oh, it's a joy to be here. It's so funny when people say, oh, I'm so glad to see you back. Because for me, I feel like I've always fucking been here. I've always fucking been here. But, of course, I absolutely did take two years off social media. And so for a lot of people, they felt like they didn't see me for a long time. And um, even though I was creating and still teaching courses and blogging and all that kind of stuff, I think people just missed seeing me on video. Um, and I get that because I am a 10 out of 10 adorable fucking human. I really am. Ivana says, Leonie, I discovered your work 10 plus years ago. I've been so grateful for your art, creativity, inspiration, authenticity. Fast forward to now, I've started a conscious leadership center. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Ivana, congratulations, you incredible human. Obviously, it's taken you so much courage and inspiration and fortitude and work and spirit and salt and tears and sweat to get to where you are and I just I applaud you I absolutely applaud you, applaud you. the D guy says do you think a podcast needs to be topic specific specific I started a creative pod about my real life messy magic and encouraging women to embrace theirs my new coaching business is supporting women to reconnect with nature, their own nature, and I'm pondering starting a new pod about connection to nature. Am I overcomplicating it? Yeah, I think so because I think a lot of people that love messy magic will love the next thing you do as well. Um, also, you are asking the person whose podcast is literally called Leonie Dawson refuses to be categorized because I didn't want to choose topic. Fuck no. <laughs> I'm going to talk about everything. I'm going to talk about everything. Um, Amber says, are these live events going on only through this open enrollment time frame? Um, the live stream stravaganza is uh, definitely a celebration of the Academy being open um, this week. Um and then I'll return to my normal programming of doing the group coaching um, every month and the business basics workshop every month and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I might do more like public live streams in, in the future, but it really depends on my energy levels. And sometimes I just want to go into hibernation mode with creativity and whatever way creativity calls. I don't have a plan, Amber, you know this. Kelly says, I just realized you have an academy course on burnout. That's exactly where I am at the moment, so I'm keen to have a look. Dive in, my queen. That's like a training bundle of all the different things that I've created about burnout over the years. Um, it's something that happens to all of us at some point. Um, and, um, yeah, it's there for you, my queen. It's there for you. Kehani says, love you, love you right back. I love you right back. My darling, beloved Nixie says, do you still have your big girl boggers, queen? I want you all to know. Okay, so you know how I was talking about succulent wild woman? 
uh, the message board that I was on before social media was invented. Well, it was just the most magical place because not only did I get to like tell world famous authors suck all about my absolutely horny dog fucking everything in sight but um I got to meet the most beautiful and incredible humans that I'm still friends with to this day and Nixie is one of them and Nixie was one of the first people who really it's like she saw my future and she's like one day I'm gonna say I knew her before she wasn't famous. I knew I knew the Leonie Dawson before she was the Leonie Dawson and she did and she does and I feel so grateful. There's this quote about how, um, you know, I'm so grateful to all the little birds who sing the song of my heart to me when I forget it and I feel like Nixie and other people in that, in that marvellous message board it's like they saw the song inside me before, like, and while I was only just starting to glimpse it, you know, and I feel so lucky. And the big girl boggers is because um, there was um, a big meetup, Purple Goddess, our friend in Melbourne. Um, she opened her house very lovingly up for anybody on that board to come and visit. And this is the time where, like, internet friends were, like, serial killers and, um, so people from all over the world flew in for that and we had just the most incredible and beautiful time together. And um, I remember taking like photos of everyone as goddesses in the backyard um, and some people got their kid off and I did this beautiful photo shoot of Nixie and oh, I still wear Nixie's bracelet to this day because on that weekend um, she was wearing this incredible like bracelet that had buffaloes all over it and buffaloes just speak completely to my heart. And I was like, oh, my God, I love buffaloes so much. And she said, oh, it's yours. And she put it on my arm and it's just been there ever since. And, oh, my goodness, women and women circling together are fucking magic, fucking magic. Ali said, Natasha and Louise's workshops were my absolute favourites at conference, hands down. Absolutely agree. And I also kind of completely agree because you've just slighted the fact that I spoke at that conference, Ali. Also me. No. <laughs> no, Natasha Bartlett from Queen Indologist and Louise's workshops on inclusion were just, yeah. I sobbed. I fucking sobbed my way through Natasha's. I had a fucking nervous breakdown down the back. It was really cathartic and really good. <laughs> Louise said, that's exactly why my business name's Louise O'Reilly. I can do what I want. That's right. You can say everything. Um, Hope Rising says, Graceland and Paul Simon are the best. See me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Yeah, it's just. 60s and 70s folk rocks where it's at. Um, Lee says, I do, Nixie says, I do say that. I love you so much. I love you so much. Just the love, love, love you so much. And I still have your poetry book here somewhere as well. I have like a little collection of all of my friends' books they've written over the years. And I also like love going into bookstores as well just so I can feel like I visit friends in like who have their books out as well. And I also like, um, like my friends, Denise L. Thomas, Tina Tower, they've both got books out at the moment that are in like major distribution. And so wherever I see their books, I always like move them to center stage in the bookstores. Nice. Fixed it. Fixed it for them. <laughs> Hope Rising says, I am in burnout right now. I just finished launching. I got a lot of stuff going on with my wonderful neurodivergent teens. Two weeks to my 50th and a family holiday to Thailand. Thank goodness. No more trying. Oh, yes. Just a big exhale out, right? Just like, oh, thank goodness. And whatever you can do to, to start adding more self-care into your days now, will be really useful. Horizontal time, filling up your well time, asking yourself how you can do a little bit less because 
as women, as non-binary folk, as caretakers, we're the ones that are always like, okay, what can I do more? How can I be everything to everyone? And we do need to learn how to pull back and just go, think it's time for a lazy bitch weekend. That's what me and my partner, my husband, have been calling it for a really long time. He'll say, it's time for an LBW. And I'll say, a what? He'll say, lazy bastard weekend. It's just pajama weekend. You do fucking nothing. It's the greatest. Fairbain says, what if I want a calendar month in my yearly planner? Where would I find a template to use a good quality for something like that? I think that's what I mean. I have lots of ideas. I just don't know how to create them for a layout. Oh, like Canva, like the pro version you do get like licensed versions of that. And I am not aware that there's any copyright um, like issues on that. I think like they have paid creators for those options as far as I'm aware. Oh, they've got staff. Kayleen says, I remember Leonie doing YouTube videos playing with crystals and fairies. Oh, my gosh. In the olden days, I was just going to the hairdresser today with my mother-in-law. Um, we are having mummy-daughter hairdressing day. <laughs> um, and she was saying to me, Leonie, like I miss your long mermaid hair. And she was saying to the hairdresser, like I just want you to know that this one has like long, beautiful, blonde curls that just ringlet up and it looks so divine. And she cuts it all off. And I was like, uh-huh, I do because I just, I can't be bothered brushing it. It's too much work. <laughs> Bless. I like the pixie cut as well. Um, but the crystals and fairies era was very, very fun. And I love it very much. And I'm still, I'm still a hippie at heart. And my eldest is now 13. And so she is becoming aware of the world. And she said to me, oh my God, she said to me on the weekend, I was tidying the house up. Let me show you this, guys. And I have this beautiful kind of, um, candelabra but I don't put candles in it and so I just put crystals inside it and some bangles instead and she was like of course you did mum such a hippie such a hippie and I was like yes I am child that's exactly what's happening here and um she said to me oh well at least you're not like those hippies that like put their crystals in like water to cleanse it and put it under the moonlight. And me and Chris just stopped and were like, yes, I absolutely do do that. And Chris is like, what are you, Bob does it out the back all the time. She's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, mother? I was like, I'm not joking. I'm not fucking joking with you. And then we went for a walk yesterday through the rainforest and she said to me, Mom, what conspiracy theory do you wish was true? And I love her questions. And I said, oh, I think that I want mermaids and unicorns to at least have existed at some point. That would be so cool. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. And my youngest said, I wish that dragons were real, but they were like friendly dragons and they cared for us. And I was like, oh, okay. And what? so if they're not going to eat us, what are they going to eat? And she said, cows, obviously obviously. <laughs> um, and then I was like, you know, you know what? I'm going to take it all back. I think I would really like the fairy conspiracy theory to be true. I really do. And they're like, oh yeah, no good call. Fairies would be awesome. So awesome. Fawn says, any advice on creating a good balance between being a mum, working, finding time for creative endeavors and everything else in life that requires your time? Yeah, I think for me, self-care is kind of critical to keeping the ship going, even if it means that I'm not going to do all the things. So, for example, on weekends, I, like in the afternoons, after midday, I am not on duty anymore. <laughs> and my kids know it. Um, they know that come the afternoon, come midday, I am going to – um, go read a book in bed or do e-courses in bed or just go into my room and close the door and they can do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> and 
Um, usually what that means, they'll, be, they'll watch a movie with their dad or they'll um, play Minecraft with him. And I've been doing this for a really long time, ever since I, like, when was, like, I was still breastfeeding or they'd still need me to, like, help them get to sleep. They would just come in when they'd need me and they'd lay down in the bed with me and they'd fall asleep or not. Mm-hmm. Mommy's having downtime. And if I don't, I really can't do the rest of the stuff for the rest of the week. And I also need to keep a low demand lifestyle in order to have enough energy. So my kids do not do all the activities. They do, um, like they don't get booked into all of the extracurricular activities. They don't go to all the birthday parties. We prioritize rest in our house first and foremost. Um. Laura says, I'm so happy to be in your space. I signed up to the yearly thing last night. I got straight in. I love your take on decluttering. My home's so messy. It's a huge guilt thing. So I'm letting go of that and doing the five minutes a day. Thank you. Thank you. I am so thrilled to hear it. And it does make a massive difference. Like just being able to make it doable for yourself is hugely helpful. Um, And um, obviously I'm not a minimalist. You can clearly tell from my surroundings but keeping in a way so that it is doable and functionable for for me and so I don't have to spend my life cleaning or just falling over clutter all the time is um the good spot for me if anyone's in the academy if you'd go check out get organized that is um my 21 day course to help you get your shit sorted in life and in business and in your home and all that sort of stuff it's really good and really comprehensive and really fun and totally doable ali says lol leonie yours is right there up there with them for being the favorite i promise yeah we agree Ali. it's fun <laughs> <laughs> okay amber says i would love an lbw <gasps> let me write you a permission slip right now going to actually i'm gonna write your permission slip i have because it's launch week i've decided to move into the lounge room um just for something fucking different i'm gonna get a piece of paper out i'm gonna write you hereby have permission To have a LBW. Your permission slip is complete. You hereby have permission to have an LBW. Whatever the fuck you want. And if that means every single weekend, fucking go for it. Fucking go for it. LBW, take it. Pass it on. I think it'll change the world. Kayleen says, I, l- I remember when you first got your hair all cut off. Yeah, that was when I first had Starry, so nearly 13 years ago. I just, long hair just didn't work when I had a baby. <laughs> it did not. And uh, also moving to North Queensland again after being in the cold climate of Canberra did not work for long hair again. Ali says, I love both your kids. Friendly dragons that eat cows. Perfect. <laughs> Um, Home Rising says low demand's huge in our house. We have a PDA. Yeah. Exactly right. People don't know what PDA is. It means a public display of affection. I'm just kidding. It does mean that, but um, it it's a certain trait that a lot of uh, people with autism or ADHD have, which is um, path- pathological demand avoidance. So they don't need a lot of. Um, they don't. They don't. They, they don't want. They can't have um, too many requests or expectations on them, basically. Ivana says, get organized. The course is awesome. Hooray! I'm so thrilled. Ah, my queens. So my husband's gone to pick up the children. They're going to be home in like seven minutes. So if at any point in time I go, oh, I've got to go, uh, it's because I want to go run up to them and pour all my love onto them they have um a sports carnival tomorrow um 
And because they've been up to an alternative education, been in an alternative education school before this, my 13-year-old has never been to a sports carnival and has never done athletics. Um, she has no interest in it either. I just want to be clear. I, I did not raise sporty children. <laughs> um, surprising, I know. But um, and so she has said to me, can I just not, can I just opt out of that particular embarrassment of not knowing a single thing to do there? I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can't because we sent it to the swimming carnival and she was literally a fish out of water or a drowning human in a pool. <laughs> she did not drown, uh, but she felt very uncomfortable and did not enjoy that experience. So we're letting her opt out if she wishes to and but my youngest is still at an age where like they do not really fuck all in athletics so we thought instead of having her opt out of sports carnivals for the rest of her her life she's gonna need to go to at least one or two to dive into the spirit of it I don't know it's so hard to know right like what what's a um a useful level of experience and resilience de developing and what do you just like opt out of entirely? <laughs> uh, Fairmaiden Market says, thank you, Leonie, you're the best. I'm definitely Ingrid the implementer. So thank you for all your whoop whoop awesomeness. Now, if you don't know what the three types of learners are, I talk about this in the academy and in my courses quite a lot. Um, I am always encouraging people to be Ingrid the implementer. So usually what I see is that people are Eleanor the enthusiastic and Eleanor the enthusiastic is somebody who sees all the courses and books under the sun and is like, oh, that looks so great and does, and buys them and then just doesn't even open them. Just is so excited at the idea of buying and then doesn't do the fucking thing. Then you've also got Ruby the reader who will buy it and read it all, but like not do any of the homework and none of like do no implementation and be like, huh. I wonder why that didn't work, even though I literally made no changes to my life and my business. And then Ingrid, the implementer, is the, um, the person who buys the courses, goes through the courses, and implements the courses, does the fucking homework, and tries those things out in um in, in their business to see the impact and sees the results. So I'm always telling my clients, this is what you need to be. You need to increment the implementer. Increment the implementer is somebody who schedules um, study and learning into their calendar, um, who makes sure that they do all the homework, implements it into their business, see what works and see what doesn't, fucks off the things that, that don't work. Um, mindset says... Uh, Ali says, I think I'm Eleanor. The vast majority are Eleanor until you <laughs> can train yourself otherwise. Ivana says, can you give a quick tip on how to get started writing a very personal share? I know I, what I want to say, my immigration story, but need help getting over resistance to being vulnerable. What I try to do is think about all the people it'll, it will help. So in your case, people are going to feel, other people who are immigrants are going to feel so safe and loved and heard and understood and so relieved to see their own personal story um, shared. And for people who are not immigrants, it is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for them to learn, to get to know you even more and even deeper to witness your um, incredible courage and resilience and creativity in making that move um, and also considering how they can be more compassionate or mindful um, of people who have gone through immigration themselves and the particular challenges that they may go through. And I think it's kind of a story that is especially important at the moment, considering how many Americans are looking at becoming immigrants as well uh, because of current political uh, situation in the US. Jolanda said, I had to learn to be an implementer. Yeah, I want you all to know I am not a born implementer. <laughs> I'm a born enthusiastic. 
I'll buy all the fucking shit and then forget all about it. Um, so the learning like the skill set and developing those skills uh, was definitely something that was very learnable. Especially had to learn to let go of what doesn't work. I was blindly following what others do who, in my view, were successful. Absolutely. You need to test it out, see what works for you first and foremost because you are the most important part of your business. Um, and also um, what works for your people? What's a really good fit? Because we all come in with these enormous strengths um, in our personality, the things we really enjoy doing and that we're really good at, and then the parts that just aren't as amazing for us. Um, and real success, sustainable success, comes from sticking in the lane of doing what works for you and what's good for your skills. And you can try out the other things, but don't be afraid to kill it off if it's not for you. Um, thank you for the guidance from Ivana. Goosebumps, I love you and will always remember this. Mm. It's when I'm creating, I try not to think about myself per se. I try to think about the people it will help. Yeah. All right, my loves, I love you all. I'm so grateful that you're on the planet doing the things that you are doing. If you are called, please do check out my academy, leonidawson.com forward slash academy. It's the place that I wanted to do something that's radically different in that, um, sure, I could take all of the wisdom and knowledge that I have from creating best-selling books and selling $13 million in 10 hours a week. Um, and I could sell it for, you know, I could, I could have high-end masterminds and charge tens of thousands of dollars for them. I could sell my courses for thousands of dollars each um, because they are comparable to other courses out there. I've got the experience and I know what works. But instead, I much prefer to help as many people as possible. And um, I much prefer to help um, people without them having to go into credit card debt. And so I pile all of my programs that I've created plus three or more new courses or resources coming out every single month. Um, I do monthly group coaching for it as well. And it all gets packaged together over $5,000 in value for under $100 a year. It's ridiculous um, and it's wildly generous, but it's the way I fucking love it. I don't sell anything else. I am not going to upsell you into something else, which is the real deal, you know, whether you get the real results. No, I'll just give you the fucking thing that you need right now. The number one, like, support for people who are heart-centered uh, business owners and just help you grow your business. So I'd love for you to join me. I think there's only two days left to be able to join. Um, I'd love to see you in there. All right, my children are home. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy. I'm going to go see them. Thank you for being here with me. I love you all.